Hi, welcome. This is Amanda Weaver joining me today in, in today's discussion around women in interviewing LP edition. I have Stephanie Hoover, Dina Bailey, Tawana Brazil, and Jennifer Schaefer joining me today in my discussion. Thank you ladies for joining. Welcome, welcome. Thank Stephanie, you. I'll start with you. Can you just kind of share a brief introduction who you are? I know we all know who you are, but <laughs> your version of who you are. <laughs> okay, well, wow, that's flattering. Thank you. Um, yeah, happy to kick it off. So Stephanie Hoover, I'm an AVP with Alto and I'm in charge of strategic accounts and business development here. Been up with Alto for about a year, but spent over 23 years working in retail loss prevention and have been on the vendor side, I'd say for about the last eight years now. So it's been an interesting twist for me, but I'm happy to be here today and glad to talk about women in interviewing. Very good, thank you. How about you, Jen, you're next. Well, much like Stephanie, I've been in the industry of criminal justice for over 23 years. I'm currently at T-Mobile Corporate, and I'm in the field supporting over um, 150 plus stores around asset protection. So I worked in many different channels, whether quick service, gourmet food, corrections, academic, and, you know, really appreciate the opportunity to speak on, you know, not only celebrating International Women's Day, but the continued impact that we have in this industry about women in interviewing and the success stories. Very good. Thank you for joining me, Jen. How about you, Tawana? Yes, uh, my career started in 1991 as a um, jailer for the largest county within uh, Texas. I advanced on to become a police officer uh, shortly thereafter and spent uh, close to 17 years uh, doing that. And I transitioned over into the private sector, advancing for a number of leadership roles from supervisory up to director level. I'm currently working in the asset protection unit, a portion of the corporate compliance team for at and Very good, very good. And how about you, Dina? Um, started off um, public sector and public defender's office, and from there moved to loss prevention about 23 years ago as well. Um, started off in specialty at Ann Inc. and uh, the past three years over at Nike as the director of loss prevention for the East. Very good. So we've got a lot of diversity, a lot of really great um, background joining us here today. So I want to kick off our conversation and kind of get your thoughts. Um, so several of you are coming from or have in the past transitioned from public to private sector. We've got stuff over here that went from private sector LP into the vendor side of things. But I'm curious for your thoughts. What do you what do you find are some of the challenges facing women in business today? And I'll pass it to any one of you that wants to kick us off. Well, I think, yeah, yeah I, I'll, I'll take a stab at it, right? Yeah, um, sure. I think what's, what's important is over my time, it's been a very male-dominated industry, and that could be considered a challenge. It could be considered the diversity and inclusion in regards to just having a seat at the board table, right? I think what's really important is just, you know, over my time in different forums, right, and even including retail, it's continuing the partnership and engaging and sharpening your saw, the educational piece, the certification piece, the external forces that are there. I think a lot of development, um, you know, is minded through the opportunity within your organization, but not limiting yourself. And some of those opportunities present themselves when you expand your horizons and you look globally, which is what I've been doing for the past year plus at, at uh, T-Mobile. So I think some of those pieces are not only your own limitations that you put in your mind, but also taking opportunities um, when you're in the industry, whether it's our industry or not, to really mine the battlefield, remove roadblocks and barriers for, for not only yourself, but being a connection for others. Yeah, I think that's great. You know, I think about mentorship, allyship, you know, just being a support system to someone, I think is a really great starting place uh, to kind of find your groove and where you fit in there. And can you be a support or can you be that person just to help provide direction? I think that's mm -hmm. such a great starting point. Anybody else have any other thoughts? That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> All right. So as we move along here, um, what are some of the roles or discuss or share with us some of the roles that gender stereotypes play in creating challenges for women in business? What are you seeing here? 
is some of the roles that gender stereotypes create is just, you know, over, over time, traditionally, you know, years ago, when you thought of, of security or asset protection or anything in the protection industry, you immediately thought of a male. That was yep. just, that was just the nature of how people thought. And so as time has passed, you know, those gender roles have not been so much of a focus. It's more now is, can you assist me? You're here to assist me. I don't think people really process whether or not a man or woman is going to show up. They just want some assistance. Mm -hmm. Do you think confidence versus um, quality uh, plays a role here or confidence versus competency plays a role mm -hmm. here? Um, well, confidence, I think, in the short term is great, but that's going to come out in the wash. So if you don't have the competency to back it up, that people are going to key into that pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, to your point, I think um, I think women have gotten better at being their own advocates over the years. Uh, and, and as Tawana just said, it's definitely male dominated. And still today, it's, you know, largely a, a male industry. Uh, but I think we've gotten a lot better at advocating for ourselves. Yeah, agreed. I remember the first NRF I ever went to and went to women in loss prevention. Um, I was asked by my VP at the time, he said, hey, I want you to check it out. And me being 23, probably at the time, no kids, not married. I walked out and I was, I said, yeah, I don't know if this, this one's for me. A lot of them were just so negative and, you know, they were the victim and what have you. And I remember like it was yesterday, he looked at me and he said, why do you think I sent you in there? And you know, the next one I went to, I gave pushback and I said, well, what are you doing to make yourself relevant? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Joe Mason and all of the other leaders for women in LP have really paved the way to uh, just build it to what it is today. Yeah. I would agree. I, I think there's some really great, you know, we're talking about celebration of women, but that allyship is so important, right? So finding those, be it a, a male business partner, um, to really get that support from those other people to use their voice and their leadership and, and um, their influence, right, to get women's voices out there and, you know, push us into our discomfort as Dina went through there. Um, I'm curious, um, there's a lot of discussion around um, the opinion whether or not uh, there are differences as it relates to how men and women lead. What are your thoughts on that? Well, well, oh, go ahead, go ahead, Tawana. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily think that men or women lead differently. I, I will say that people lead uh, from a place of their own experiences. Whether those are positive experiences, bad experiences, personal related or professional related, we all lead from that place. We've all had, of course, great leaders. We've all had poor leaders. And sometimes we pull from that. And I just often think that uh, we lead from there. Also, women have a tendency to be more nurturing because we're nurturers by nature. So I do feel that we tend to lead a little bit more empathetically um, and sometimes more organized. That's just from my experiences. Yeah, and you know, to take on to that, you know, I've worked for more men than women. And, you know, regardless of, you know, the mainstream industry or not, that's just how the cards fell. And I will tell you, many of the men um, were empathetic or they remembered their experiences and they were learning from that. You know, from my standpoint, I've taken, you know, the good and the bad and the neutral from everyone that has been a leader for me and whether you're leading processes or projects or people, um, I think it's really important to remember, you know, those shoes that you're standing in and yep. also making sure that when when you're leading, whether male or female, it's what brand you have as an individual, uh, you know, minus removing the gender, what brand do you have? What do you want to bring to the table each and every day? What legacy do you want to leave behind? And I've always said, you know, remembering where I came it doesn't mean, you know, one side of the street or the other. It remembers remembering the path that you built for yourself. And remember, you know, there's many people that may have that mentorship or the old riding someone's coattails. And, you know, to be proud of where you've been and be proud of where you are and where you want to go so you can continually bring, you know, like today, women together and connect everyone so we're stronger together, which I think is really important, removing even the gender piece. Yeah. Agreed um, with both Jennifer and Juana. I've primarily worked for men and I felt like there was, for most leaders, there was never really a separation. It wasn't, 
you're a female, I'm a male, especially in a male dominated industry. I feel like if anything, they pushed me a little bit more to mm -hmm. put myself out there and to get my name out there. So definitely my biggest advocates, but you, you need to want it for yourself and you need to really pave your own pathway. And uh, sometimes you don't realize it in the moment, but those little successes could mean, you know, a pivotal moment in your career. And it's not until you sit back in something, a forum like this and self-reflect yeah. to uh, realize some of those moments. I have to agree with everyone here on the panel. It's, um, and I, I think I mentioned this to you, Amanda, it's really 50 shades of leadership. Like everybody, you, you have your own style and it, it's not based on, in my opinion, on gender completely. Uh, but what fa does factor in is how people have preconceived notions and biases and how they react to you in that leadership role. They may have some gender stereotypes and um, sort of react to you in that way. But I, I don't think my leadership style is affected much by my gender. Yeah. Yeah. I know when I think about myself, I look back on my career and there are, you know, different leadership styles that I like and ones that I don't like. There's ones that work for me and encourage my success. And there's ones that we just didn't fit, right? And it's it's not male or female. I pick and choose from both male and female leaders or mentors, right? And then create my own brand as, as Jennifer said. Um, so I, I, I don't see it as one or the other. I just pick and choose from both. And hopefully as we move forward, that's the direction we're gonna go. It's not going to be about male or female. It's going to be about the best of the best. Right. Um, so we, we've talked a little bit about empathy and I think empathy and rapport go hand in hand. So what are your thoughts? Um, tell us about a time you, you've had to interview somebody or speak with somebody that just really wasn't interested in communicating with you and you really took it as it's because I'm a female, whatever they said, their prompt, whatever it is. How did you go about continuing to develop rapport with somebody who maybe wasn't interested in speaking with you. I, I can feel that one and start us off. It, it's happened to me a lot in my career. Um, in fact, it, it just, even just in everyday life, I was interacting with a, a sales guy at a, a car dealership recently, and he was very obvious in that he did not want to even make eye contact with me. He just wanted to talk with my husband. And that's super frustrating. It, it's happened in my professional life too. And the thing that I've just done over the years is I don't let that stop me. Um, and it, in the interview role, it would be just continuing to try and develop rapport and establish credibility with that person. Uh, if it's somebody that I'm trying to work with in a, a sales position, uh, it's just trying to find how we can connect. There has to be a way to connect with that person. Yeah. And even thinking back into my interviewing career in LP, it was you'd have to sometimes come to the point where if you want to be successful, maybe we need to bring in a male interviewer. I had to be open to that. Um, but there, there has to be a lot of different ways to attack that and come at it. Yeah, I think, yeah, and I would agree with Stephanie on that. It's, you know, more of, you know, I look at it as the individual, right? And how do you really break that mold of walking in and having that conversation, whether it's interviewing an employee for theft or fraud, to having a conversation with, let's just say, even an accountant, right? Or anybody for that matter. I mean, it can be any profession, but I think really making sure that there's, you know, a knowledge point and awareness that you can share, that you can have that conversation and just be a person. I mean, there's so many times I'll say, you know, I put my pants on the same way. Okay, is it right, left, left, right, or whatever may be the case, but, um, you know, we, we're all people, and I think when talking to individuals, it's understanding that they're coming into the room with many more things or baggage than potentially myself or those that are in the room. And, you know, we take a very, um, you know, just mindful approach around people's mindset in regards to how did they get here? And they got here well before, um, you know, we're sitting down that day to talk with them or even having a conversation across the table, maybe with a male peer, is that we all have to be, you would like to and all be respectful of people's space. And I think that that's what's really critical. I mean, I'm small in stature. So even my stature, you know, if I'm, you know, short or tall or, you 
know, what I'm bringing to the table or that female is, you know, hi, I'm Jennifer and I'm in asset protection. And they almost take a step or two back, right? You mm -hmm. know, oh, you're in that industry or, oh, yeah. you, know, you know, or, and just the other day I had someone say, well, you know, it's this culture outside of where I work is uh, middle-aged white male. It's the mm -hmm. old school or old boys mentality. And, you know, I haven't heard it for a while, you know, it's out there, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, you know, it's even been said is that, you know, remembering um, and reflecting on where you've been so you can make mm -hmm. mindful and educated decisions on your talk track too, and words you're going to be using. Yeah. yeah. Agreed. I mean, as well, it goes back to what I mentioned earlier about the experiences, so whether yeah. good or bad that we bring to a, a, a situation, in, even in interviewing. Uh, the, we don't know the experiences of the gentleman that Stephanie encountered and what his you know, experience was with women when he met with them in the profession that he was in, or just his perception of who he thinks should make that purchase or lead the conversation that they were leading. Yeah. But in those instances, I found that we have an opportunity to remain professional. We also have an opportunity to, in some ways, change that person's perspective or make it a little different from our interaction. And how we interact with them could really make the difference of whether or not they approach the next situation the same way. Yeah. I love mm -hmm. that, you know, take every opportunity to be a teacher, right? Uh, Stephanie, that would blow steam. I taught him a lesson, ears. believe me. <laughs> <laughs> at the car dealership. Oh, man, oh, man. But here we have Tawana. And look at this is the purpose of what we're doing to help reset. We've got Tawana over here saying this is an opportunity for you to educate somebody. And you are absolutely right. And that's why I think of Ally Ship. We're here to talk about that, where I'd be very upset if I was in Stephanie's shoes, but yes, it is an opportunity to educate someone to say, listen, it's not all black and white. It's not, you know, there's a lot of gray here. And as we move forward in this world, things are changing. So we got to encourage you to know that mindset and be it, you know, we're here to talk about women's empowerment and celebrate women. And we want change. And this year's theme is break the bias, but I think it starts with ourselves and just really looking in the mirror as to what, what, how do I want my girls? I have two daughters. How do I want my girls to grow up in this world? Um, mm -hmm. And it starts with us and, and, you know, just being that professional person like Stephanie was in that car dealership and taking some deep breaths. I'm sure you did. And, <laughs> and just taking that opportunity to professionally educate that person. Oh yeah. Learning opportunities. <laughs> yeah. It's all about building rapport. I remember uh, at one point in my career, I was told by someone that worked for me, oh, you only have your position because you're a female. And first of all, I was glad we were over the phone. <laughs> I took a breath and I, you know, I asked that person, I said, well, what have you done to make yourself relevant? Tell me about it. Because this is what I did and named off some of the opportunities I took on. You know, sometimes you'll take on a challenge that might not be your favorite area of expertise, but hey, you do it if it's going to help you grow. And, you know, by the end of the conversation, I think we saw eye to eye a little bit more, but it was, you know, it was the first time I was really challenged in that aspect. And uh, it was, a, it was definitely an interesting situation to be in. Yeah, I think when you're kind of like smacked in the face with that saying, so here we're talking to, again, we're break the bias, but when you're actually confronted with somebody who has that viewpoint, it's just like a whoa, like, you know, just a shot of cold air right in your face or a punch to the gut. Um, and I appreciate how, how you handled that. Again, it goes back to the education piece and, and kind of to what Steph shared earlier, establishing that credibility, just like in, in an interview setting, right? <laughs> Um, so I love that. So I think it, when we're looking for change, I think it really takes someone to look at themselves in the mirror, male or female, and say, where does this start? It starts with me. And I think being agile and flexible to somebody who may have a completely different viewpoint is a really great starting point to say, hey, why do you think this way? And here, these are my thoughts and just get the conversation going. So we talked earlier about the fact that support is, is you know, a uh, an aspect to all this. Um, what does your home life look like? How do you how do you get support outside of work? Not maybe not just at home, but how do you how do you get support, or how do you go about seeking support outside of work to make you successful at work? I have my squad. Ah, <laughs> the Steph yeah. squad. 
Yeah, no, I, we have a, a, a really tight knit group of friends and, um, you know, sometimes there's things happening at work that you, you don't want to talk with a coworker about. You'd have to bounce it off with some other friends that you have. Um, and then, it, you know, the home aspect, my, my family is super supportive of everything um, and have been for years. And I wouldn't be here today without their support, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Same. I mean, you know, I've, I've got a 10 year old and soon to be nine year old twins and, you know, for the better part of their life, I've always traveled, but my husband's been very supportive and uh, the kids are agile. You know, they, they get it now post COVID it's a little harder, but to your point, Stephanie, just having that squad and having those people that you can vent to and be vulnerable with. And, uh, you know, it definitely gives you that balance. Yes, uh, outside support is very important, as well as taking time for self-care. I, I think that's a portion of the yeah. balance as well. We have to be responsible for our own, uh, you know, mental wellness, our own self-care, as well as having someone that can assist us with our, you know, child care when, when, when there's a need. You know, I've traveled, you know, my kids are young adults now, but, you know, I've traveled along the way when they were younger, and you have to have someone there to be able to assist you when needed, and whether it be immediate family members or those extended individuals that you can you know, that you can um, tap into uh, at the right time. Yeah. yeah, I think it's so critical regarding, like you said, you know, the the mental mindness and the wellness, right? And, you know, I look back at my career and I've moved or relocated three different times, most recently last July. And, you know, when you move, you pick up your roots, right? You have your quote unquote, your circle of friends, your circle of influence. But over time, you know, those some of those come and go. And you really identify those core individuals that will be there with you forever. And, you know, picking up and relocating, whether personal, professional, well, it's a great great, great opportunity. There's various challenges and you're, you're building your own strength and, and who's going to be, you know, with you and along for the ride, I think is so critical. And during those times, you really identify what your individual needs are, what your aspirations and goals are personally, professionally. And, you know, it's helped me build more of a well-rounded me, um, you know, and I think that, you know, being younger and moving versus, you know, a little bit older and moving and what you're wanting out of your career, whether locally, or internationally, it really makes an impact of who you are and how you're viewing the world. What lens are you looking through when yeah. you're kind of looking through the, the times of life, right? And we all know what's what we've done, where we've been, but where do we want to go? And just keeping the wellness in the forefront because that's critical for any one of us. Yeah, I'm happy I think Jennifer so. mentioned that too, though. I'm happy Jennifer mentioned that because I've traveled, I've, I've relocated along the way to a city where I didn't know anyone for a career yeah. opportunity. And you have to, I'm also a person of faith. You have to know that if it's in, you know, God's will for you to go forward in, in that position in another city, that you're going to be aligned with the individuals that you need to, to be able to be that source of support for you, you know, immediately outside of your home, whether it be, you know, tapping into a sports organization, whether there's other parents that you meet that your children may become fond with that can help you when you're away or your significant other or whomever it may be as well. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, you know, I've been that road warrior. I've relocated many times as well. Um, not only that support system, I'll tell you, you know, I have so much appreciation for my husband. He's been with me from the days I used to carry a pager. And now I, <laughs> I, I get to have a phone now. Um, but that's kind of how we've evolved. He, he got to learn a little bit about my world and we, lit, we work in two completely different industries. But when I think about also that mental wellness, I, I certainly agree with each of your points, but I think when I've been that, again, road warrior and have to travel, I like to work out. I like to eat healthy. And I think it's important that when you are that road warrior, you maintain those healthy habits because it really impacts your mental well-being as well. I don't sleep well in hotels, but if I work out and I stick with my pursuit of a healthier lifestyle in the, the choices I make in, in terms of what I eat, I feel better about myself versus, you know, you've got your per diem. And I know I, I, I work with folks that are like, we're going to the steakhouse tonight. I, 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 I'm not going to go or eat like that. I, it's not part of who I am. So something as simple as that, just maintaining that healthier lifestyle when you are traveling really impacts the mind and the mood, if you will. Very good. Um, so another question I have for you, what are some of the benefits of supporting women in leadership? 
what do you think some of the benefits could be to supporting women in leadership roles? Supporting women in leadership roles is important because um, it, it's definitely needed. Um, it's a portion of, again, the women's equality. Uh, I think we've shown that we can effectively lead and that support from all genders helps. It helps further that effort. Yeah. And you yeah. can really story tell as well, because most of the time you've been in their shoes and you know you can let them know how you overcame certain barriers and opportunities but you know women that i've mentored who i remember being in their shoes back then and i look back and i'm like all right you're going to get through this and this is how so uh it you know again that self reflection piece yeah yeah, you know, Amanda, when you're asking the question, I'm thinking, you know, and in processing going, there's so many different examples about bringing women in leadership along, right, and networking and the, the pool of individuals and just the creativity that comes together. And I think about my current um, director and just her support and camaraderie and passion as a woman in leadership and even being a mentor. And what's mm -hmm. exciting is that she is, you know, behind her uh peer group behind her, a team, 150 plus percent on their pursuance of goal and happiness. Right. It is about you first. Mm -hmm. We have a role and responsibility to do, but even different engagements that I have outside of T-Mobile that brings not only women together, but yeah. women in leadership to global forums to engage and just the information, not only from what we do as industry professionals, but just learning small nuggets of information about what someone may do that could really help another person maybe change their mindset or learn from is so critical. And that is where I look at some of the different examples in the past few years where, you know, working with women overseas and providing a forum for, you know, the international side, which I've shared with you. And there's so much information, so much wealth out there that we can share as just comrades that yeah. it's really exciting to know that there is that community. Yeah. 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 Retail is, it's changing. It's not mm -hmm. the same. And if we're going to move forward and we're going to change, uh, we need a diverse set of voices. It's it's female, it's male, it's it's all ethnicities. We have to come up with new solutions. And if we have the same folks with the same ideas at the leadership roles, um, it's going to be the same result. So diversity is super important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would totally agree. Very good. So as we wind down our conversation here, I'm curious your thoughts. So again, we're celebrating International Women's Day and here at WZ, we're gonna be celebrating it all month long. So for us, it's International Women's Month. Um, but what are your final thoughts? What's your message? What, what do you wanna leave us with as it relates to your thoughts around this celebration for a full month? Um, where, where are we at today? Where would you like to see us next year? Um, in that short term, or what is even your long term goal? What's your International Women's Day message this year? I'd say for me, it's just I'm trying to pay it forward. Um, you know, reaching out to those around you that maybe need a hand up or need some advice. Um, you know, when I came up, there were very few women. And um, I look back on my current, I really wish that I'd had, had a, a woman mentor, it would have been super helpful. And yeah. I would have, probably would have made a lot fewer mistakes along the way. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm just focused on pay, paying it forward. Very good. I like that. Yes. And I, I, I think of International Women's Day as remembrance and reverence for all of those awesome women that paved the way ahead of us. And it's somewhat of a passing of the torch, a continual passing of the torch, so that those uh, women that come behind us, that torch can be passed to them and they continue to carry on. And just my overall message would be for them is to just to let their light shine and to know that you know, they've got this. Very good, love that one. I think to appreciation, appreciation how far we've come as well as people previous to us. And similar to Stephanie, I, I love paying it back. And you know, I, I look at someone taking a chance on me when I got into the industry 23 years ago, and I try to do the same day in and day out, however I can. Um, and just continuing to do so. You know, the question is so timely and I look at this Zoom meeting and I'm excited because 
I want to share and provide and invite each of you, and I share this with Amanda to a global, a small intimate group that we do overseas with some uh, women. And I'm excited because this morning I had a call with an international team through Deutsche Telekom and over 50% were women representing all countries. And it couldn't be more timely to talk about International Women's Day because having the ability to work with, you know, women from Hungary or Greece or France or any of any company or any international country is exciting because we have so much to share and to leave the thoughts with just we're stronger together. You know, we're not going yeah. to stop until truly one of our mantras is everyone's connected. And whether, you know, you're in a specific place um, in your career, whether you're changing changing out careers or, or moving forward or, or staying in a place where you're assessing, it's so important to remember, you know, like Tawana said and Stephanie and, and the team is that, you know, where, uh, where can we not only pay it forward, where can we provide thank you? And that's what's really critical. And that's what I like to do when I share, you know, the information, the education and just tools for, you know, whether it's being a mentor to even being mentored by someone else. I think it's really critical that there are no boundaries. Um, if anything, it, it's building bridges that are stronger for the bonds together, which is exciting. Very good. I love that. I just wrote a blog that, that'll be issued here in March. And, you know, one of the things I discuss is that waves start somewhere and then move around the world. That's how a wave works. Mm -hmm. And so I do believe that women worldwide are starting to become more and more unsettled with not so much just the status quo, but the status quo as it relates to how things change. It, it takes a long time and people are, I think women specifically, or underrepresented, underrepresented, oh my God, underrepresented groups, if I can say that correctly, um, are also starting to become more and more unsettled with the status quo as it relates to how change comes about. So I, I you know, and you mentioned the international group that's coming about listen, again, waves start somewhere and it's nice that all can come together in one particular, at one particular platform and then kind of create their waves and they'll come around the world and hopefully we'll see this full circle at some point, but mm -hmm. very good. Um, Dina, Tawana, Jennifer, Steph, I truly appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. You have some really great insight to share and I'm truly grateful to know each one of you and to in some way, shape or form work with you in the past and been able to share, um, you know, your thoughts and ideas um, as we push this forward and share your insight to all that are joining and, and viewing this series. So thank you again for your time. Um, happy International Women's Day to you, Women's Month, um, and we will talk soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.